In today's episode, classmate is mad I'm forcing her to eat ethnic food? Go eat a loaf of bread. Follow the school dress code? Sure, no problem. I'm not a computer person, but allow me to be as unhelpful and condescending as possible while I demand you fix my problem. So let's get started. Classmate is mad I'm forcing her to eat ethnic food? Go eat a loaf of bread. This happened about a year ago now when I was in high school. My calculus class was very chill. About 20 kids who were all friendly with each other, a laid-back, but enthusiastic teacher, and a light enough workload that we could afford to goof off in class but still learn and do well. At some point in the year I got really into cooking. It's my stress reliever. My family couldn't possibly eat the amount of food I was made so I started bringing it into school and hosting Friday parties in my calc class, with my teacher's approval of course. Now, I'm Vietnamese and I live in a predominantly white town. This is only important because it meant that most kids from town only ate American or European foods and weren't used to eating other ethnic foods. Last year around Lunar New Year, I wanted to bring in some Vietnamese foods to celebrate. It is a very important time of year for my family. I ended up making a bunch of bon de lawn, a steamed layer cake, and a traditional Vietnamese dessert. Some of my friends from class found out I was going to bring in a traditional dish and brought in their own traditional dishes from their own cultures, whether they celebrated Lunar New Year or not. We had different Indian, Korean, Filipino, and Spanish desserts. It was great and I was really excited that my friends wanted to celebrate with me. Apparently this was an issue for one girl in my class. I would say bon de lawn is an acquired taste, so when not a lot of people ate it I wasn't offended. I knew not everybody would like it. There was a lot of other food anyways. During our lunch period one of my friends, who wasn't in our class, but knew I brought food in, overheard a girl from my class complaining about the food while on the lunch line. Apparently she was saying really negative things about how I forced everyone to eat weird Chinese foods. Later that day I texted her just saying I heard she didn't like the food and wanted to know why. I don't really care when people don't like the food, I make it for myself and bring it in when I have extra anyways, but her calling it weird Chinese foods, when she knows I'm Vietnamese, didn't sit right with me. Welp, she texted back that it was rude of me to bring in weird ethnic foods that nobody would have liked except for me and said I should know better since most of the class was white. I told her that I bring in food to share because I feel like it and that I don't have an obligation to cater to her tastes. If she has an issue with it, she literally does not have to eat it and other people can bring in food too so if she wanted to she could bring in something more to her tastes. After that she just told me that I shouldn't bring in ethnic and foreign foods and stick with American foods, because we're in America. Excuse me? Like? How much you wanna bet if I brought in jambalaya, which originated in Louisiana, she would call it a weird foreign food? Fine. She only wants to eat American foods? Then she can eat American foods. The next week I brought in a bunch of oli bowl, a Dutch donut, and started passing them out at the beginning of class. When I got to her desk I pulled out a loaf of Wonder Bread and plopped it on her desk, saying sorry, but these are Dutch, too ethnic. Here you go, all American cuisine. Later she texted me asking WTF my problem was, so I told her that almost every single food I brought in this year was ethnic, and that it pissed me off she only had an issue when it wasn't European. She's entitled to not liking Asian foods, but if you're going to complain about it being ethnic, then you better have that same attitude when the ethnic food is white. And especially don't call another person's culture weird. She didn't complain about the food again. Also, before anyone comments, white bread isn't the only American cuisine out there. Here's a short list of what I've enjoyed making tater tots, jambalaya, fried chicken, many types of pies, s'mores, and Philly cheesesteaks. America is a very diverse place, and that's reflected in its food. Happy eating! Follow the school dress code? Sure no problem. Obligatory on mobile sorry for the formatting, etc. I went to a Catholic school. 
Great school, great teaching and great staff. The only downfall was the exceptionally strict dress code. Your tie had to be perfect, girls' skirts were inspected to make sure they were a certain length, socks had to be a certain height, if your clothing was a bit tight or too loose they would tell you to buy new stuff, no earrings or other jewelry, hair off the collar etc. There was also this rule that if you go anywhere before or after school you must wear your blazer. If anyone sees you without it then you get detention immediately. In hindsight, they just wanted a good image for the school which is understandable, but at the time us kids were just done with it. Due to the hair off the collar rule, most boys had short hair. This, this was at a time when shaggy or long hair was coming a bit more into style, and the boys didn't want to be seen with their buzz cuts, so they began wearing the school caps at recess and lunch. This was no issue, it was encouraged to protect yourself from the sun. It did become an issue however, when they started wearing hats during class. Teachers kept enforcing the rules telling them to take their hats off, but more and more boys started wearing them. Anyone who has attended a school in a small community knows that any sort of small rebellion act instantly causes people to jump on the bandwagon, it was funny, and it wasn't really hurting anyone so lots of the school had joined in. It finally came to a head when the principal announced at an assembly that everyone must adhere to the strict dress code, which is listed in the back of the school diaries for our reference. One of the boys in our year discovered a rule in our diary that allowed them to do what they wanted and also still follow our principal's rule. The back of our dairy dictated that school hats cannot be worn during class time unless they are also worn with sunglasses. Whoever made this rule back in 1900 or whatever must have been looking down on our school and waiting for this day. I am sure they were absolutely losing it when the next day, we had at least 65 teenage boys rock up to their first classes with school hats and ridiculous novelty sunglasses. I'm talking animal-shaped, fluoro colors, speedy Ds, but most importantly the disguised glasses with the nose and mustache attached. Needless to say, that hilarious rule was removed very quickly. I'm not a computer person, but allow me to be as unhelpful and condescending as possible while I demand you fix my problem. This actually happened a couple of weeks ago. As context, for those who haven't read my posts before, I work an out-of-hours IT desk, we support multiple businesses after hours when their IT teams leave for the day. It's 11.30 p.m., and I get a call through from my least favorite business we support, we have no systems access and very little in the way of documentation, their calls are renowned for being a pain in the A asterisk S to deal with. EA equals extremely affluent sounding British guy. Me, service desk how can I help? EA, oh hello I'm not able to print. Me, okay, any error messages? Any signs of life from the printer? EA, now hold on I'm not a computer person, so you'll need to use simple terms. Me, what happens when you print? EA, nothing happens that's why I'm calling you. Me, do you see any messages appear on the screen when trying to print? EA, no. I have a particularly low tolerance for these kinds of callers, who are unable to provide even basic details. This guy was also coming across as very condescending. Me, is your printer turned on? Can you see any lights? EA of course. Me, can you walk me through what you generally do to print something? EA, I'm not a computer person so you'll need to be more clear. Me, tell me how you'd usually print. EA, look here, I don't really understand what you're asking me. Me, what would you usually do to print? EA, I don't understand you. Me, okay sir, I'd like to connect remotely to your computer so I can see what's on the screen. Is that okay? EA, this is all very complicated. I'm not sure what you want to do. Me, I'd like to access your computer so I can see what's wrong. EA, I'm sorry, can you explain that more clearly? Me, I'm not sure how much clearer I can actually be with this. I need to remotely connect to try and fix this for you. EA, look this is terribly unfriendly for people who aren't technically savvy like myself. Why can't you fix this? Me, 
I'm trying to help you and fix it, but you haven't been able to provide a great amount of detail on the issue, so I'd like to remotely connect to take a look myself. EA, I'm not familiar with these technical terms. This is very hard. I don't understand why we have you people if you can't help people who aren't technically savvy. Me, I'm trying to help, however as it's out of hours our scope is limited. I need to remotely connect to see what's going on. I respect that you are not technically savvy, but at the same time we do expect a certain level of existing knowledge from users in order to be able to provide our support service after hours. I can ask that the main service desk calls you back in the morning if you'd prefer? EA, no look this is very important and I need this fixed, how do you get on my screen? Me, firstly, I need you to open a web browser or just go to Google. EA, I just use this for email what on earth is a web browser? Me, do you use Google? EA, yes of course I do. Me, okay, please go to Google. We spend a painful amount of time getting GoToAssist working. Me, thank you I'm now connected. I'm going to take a look at the printer setup now. Me, I see the printer is reporting not connected. Can you check to make sure it's plugged in please? I google the model number and this is an old S Epson printer. USB only. At this point I've had enough of this caller's ineptness. EA, but I don't know how. Me, I'm sorry, I really can't help you with this part. You're the one physically located with the computer and the printer. Go to the printer and make sure any wires coming from it are plugged into the PC. EA, okay. Several minutes later I hear the unmistakable sound of a device being connected in Windows. Me, okay, the printer is now showing as connected so it looks like the plug was disconnected. Please try printing again. EA navigates to Outlook, opens an email about discounted camping products, and proceeds to print it off. Me, I can hear the printer in the background so it looks like we're good now? EA, yes it's working, but you didn't help me at all click. EA was such a pita. He also left GoToAssist running in the background so I spent the next half an hour inconspicuously moving his mouse each time he tried to click something before I got bored and disconnected. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share, and we will see you in the next video.